The comment section of my last looping video started diving deeper with some more interesting ideas coming to the table. Brex showed this cool way of creating two two bar loops back to back, but this is just going to record on the same instrument, which as Earl points out, what I want to do is record clips into separate tracks so that they are layered so I can drop them in and out. Next, Earl then pointed out a great idea that CliffX Pro creator Stray had mentioned in the native control forums, instead of using an action list involving asterisk fix and weights to get this to work, you could use a max for live note trigger rack for CliffX Pro, which essentially allows an Ableton drum rack to be filled with commands. And with your commands now labeled as MIDI notes on a drum rack, you can create clips that have commands happening at all different times throughout the clip. Now, let's check out this beast of a tool, the Max for Live Note Trigger Rack for CliffX Pro. Check the link in the description for forums discussing this, as well as how to access the lessons within CliffX Pro once you get it. We'll discuss a little bit of what's going on in the intro lesson to this rack now, but once again, you can go into the included lessons within CliffX Pro if you wanna spend a little more time with it. Now, once you open it up, it looks like this initially. CliffX Pro Note Trigger Rack is a rack that embeds the Max for Live device note trigger handler. I mine it says version 1.0.2, and it has a number of slots filling the drum rack. Most of them just have this dash built in there. And at the bottom here at C1 through D sharp one, you see written in BPM 100, BPM 120, 140, 160. Adding MIDI notes on these different BPM markings will have the tempo change to that whenever the playback crosses those sections. This can be really interesting if you loop this clip and you can come up with some uncharted time signatures with those tempo changes. Right, so here's an example with BPM 100 for the first two beats and 160 for the last two beats. It gives almost like a seven feel, but staying in 4-4 with tempo changes. It sounds like this, check it out. And to change what tempo it's moving to, you can just go into the drum rack and instead of uh, BPM 160, you can just type in, uh, let's say, BPM 174. All right. And now that's gonna trigger because I have it set up here in my MIDI clip on beat one, BPM is 100. Now on beat three, BPM is 174. Let's see what that's sounds like you can see that tempo changing here right yeah this typing in on the names of the drum rack clips is how you can achieve the type of live looping requested in today's question though that constant bpm swapping is very interesting on its own to stay on track here again this is part one of my live looping with the note trigger rack series. So let's start breaking down how to achieve Earl's quest to record two instruments, two measures each within four measures, no one bar pause in between, and certainly no need to press anything uh, in between instrument switching. Now from the forum post, Earl listed again, here's what Stray recommended to achieve this type of looping. So you say you set up four pads like this, arm on, play one, and arm on, right? To arm the different tracks and play your session clips, which can trigger recording, as well as a two play one to kind of play second track. Create a clip that's five bars long, turn its loop off, and on bar one, beat one, you trigger one arm on and one play one. So turn track one on and play the first clip slot in track one. On bar three, beat one, you trigger one, play one, two arm on and two, play one. On bar five, beat one, you trigger two, play one. So this is meant to be used to record two bars simultaneously and get them in two different instrument slots. Now, when, when trying this pattern out of the box, so to speak, I had some issues getting it to work right away. Uh, here's what happens when I plugged it in right away. First, first off, it goes right to this, this clip slot at the very up top, so you have to make sure everything's cleared out since it's going to clip one. Also, it doesn't uh, turn off other instruments or have the metronome lined up, so this works if you have the metronome on 
and you don't have any other instruments armed as you trigger this. All right, so here we go. There's a number of cleaning up we could do, such as determining whether or not we want to hear the metronome at certain points, which instruments need to be armed or not be armed and when, uh, the timing of how to stagger the required actions properly, and where each new loop clip should actually be ending up. I made a number of amendments to this looping clip over weeks of testing, and I'll take you along for the ride in the process of getting this clip where we need it to be. Let's set this clip to have a quantization of none, yet set our global quantization to one bar. Right, global quantization, one bar. So here we have what you were given in the forums from Stray, and quantization is set to none, global quantization, one bar. And that being the case, instead of starting the recording process on bar one, beat one, the, the recording requires a one bar counted that's initiated on bar one, beat one. So on bar two, beat two, that's where the actual recording begins. We also wanna make sure that loop is off, right? So loop is off. And so let's start by taking this clip and adding one extra bar to the end, making it six full bars instead of five. And everything after this first downbeat, we can move, we're gonna move over one measure. There we go. All right, now that we've moved everything over, one bar to account for that counting that occurs due to the one bar global quantization. Uh, next, I added some extra commands to make sure things are running smoothly. Metronome for the recording of track one in my case, drums, and metronome off when the second instrument comes in. Also take into account when certain things should be armed. Let's add two slash arm off at the beginning and one slash arm off at the end of that loop. So again, I've talked about a little bit more basics of CliffX Pro in previous videos, as well, especially in my last live looping video, kind of diving into these looping commands we're gonna be talking about now, but just like we renamed the BPM a few minutes ago, now you can rename to get these different commands that we're adding in now. And that's what we're seeing over here in this MIDI clip. So again, metronome on for the first clip. So we're gonna use that to sync up. Metronome off once I have the drums or use it for whatever you have your track one recording with. And the metronome can turn off as you're going into that second clip there. Now, upon trying to get this to work, you'll see that there's still an error that gives an extra bar in between looping different instruments, right? So let's, uh, let's give this a test run. And you'll see there I had an extra bar before recording to the next instrument. And that's the whole whole problem we're trying to solve here with this with this Q and A today. So now to overcome that, let's take these commands and move them over just a bit to get it to trigger to record the next measure right before the next measure. And the global quantization of one bar will kick in to make sure that it starts recording right on the next downbeat. I have done hundreds hundreds of tests over the last few weeks. And I found that the closest you can get to the downbeat without having some sort of dropout error is to go to the last 32nd note of the measure. Even though I could sometimes get the last 64th note to work, and in some cases, 128th note, got a little crazy, got some things to work at 16,384th notes, but 32nd note is where you want to go to uh, to, to, to really keep, keep it locked in. So... Let's move these commands over by a 30 second note. So go over to this amendments clip, change our grid to 30 second notes, go into command one or control one. All right, I'll select all of these. Boop, just bring everything over by a 30 second note. Now let's see if that solves the problem out the gate.
And there we go. Boom. We have four measures created, two instruments that have their own two bar loops that can be manipulated, brought in, brought out, or later fully developed into song ideas. Now, I'm going to save the juiciest bits of how to turn this idea into a full live looping machine with more instruments at all different clip lengths. The last big tip I'll give in this first video of the Note Trigger Rack series is this. Consider where your loop will end up. Consider where your loop will end up, all right? So up until this point, we've always been designating these loops we create to go into clip slot one, right? So each time a loop is going to end up in this top scene here. But what if instead of always sending it to that same place, rendering the looper useless unless that slot one is empty, we could instead send our new loop to the next available clip slot. Eh? Here's how you do it. You can use one slash cell empty to select the next empty clip. Then you use one play cell to play that selected empty clip. As you may have guessed, sequencing of these events is important. The empty clip must be selected first, then you can trigger the play of that clip. Another interesting discovery is that when the first instrument being looped has its arm turned off before the downbeat of the next measure, it will start to play back automatically. So we no longer need to have one play one triggered at the end of loop one. Right, so we have that working there, going right up into clip one. But let's make sure we have the changes we need to get it to go to the next empty slot. So at the beginning here, we can see one play one. Let's switch that over to one cell empty. Just after that, let's trigger one slash play cell. The reason we have to do it this way is because there's no command in CliffX Pro for one slash play empty. Instead, we first select the next empty clip, then trigger it to play. There is, however, an incredibly large selection of different commands that you can check out in the CliffX Pro manual. Definitely recommend giving that a look if you want lots more customization. So we got one cell empty, one cell play. We'll have that come right after that. And I just like, like to have that come pretty shortly after. If you wanted to put it somewhere, you should put it in like the 30 second note after, but uh, just have that come in right afterwards. And then you have that whole bar of the one bar quantization for that to come in. Let's also check for the second instrument. Two play one becomes two play cell. And then we add two slash cell empty. All right, so I'm just gonna duplicate that, bring it down. I like to keep these Main nose long, even though they're just kind of toggling actions that happen, just so I can see them clearly in the in the MIDI slots to be organized. I feel like it is easier to be organized here than in the action list, as Earl was saying in the comments. Very nice to be be more clear here. I've also decided to have Metro off so that recording of instrument one becomes my new metronome instead of always having to hear the metronome. So that's where you see this Metro off here. Also, to stop previous loops from coming in as we start a new one, at the start, we can add to slash stop, which is going to stop the previous track if it's already playing from a different loop we have. Pretty handy. Awesome. With those latest tweaks, we have this not only set up to generate one section of loops with two instruments, you can generate unlimited as you're now able to select the next empty clip and get going. And it'll trigger the metronome on and off for you when you're starting a new idea. Let's test out this clip we've been tweaking and grab one more loop. All right, there we've got it. I hope you've enjoyed this looping deep dive. If so, hitting the thumb and subscribing definitely helps keep me motivated, especially with this video series as it took over 50 hours of research and troubleshooting to put together. And check out the next video in this series here as we dive into how to loop more than four instruments together with no bar rest in between and at whatever bar length you like. Take care.